It's safe to say that the overwhelming majority of mainstream passenger cars, regardless of size or variety, never harbored the excitement and overall appeal of a premium brand's performance-focused alternative. The Mazda 3, however, bridges that gap left and right by offering premium driving and appointment refinement in an inexpensive package. It's truly a breath of fresh air in an otherwise dying and uninspiring segment, but requires some sacrifices, so stay tuned to find out about 8 reasons why the Mazda 3 might not be the right car for you. Number 8. Polarizing Styling and Huge Blind Spots Mazda's design language is arguably one of the most exciting and beautiful solutions in the automotive world in recent years, at least from a stylistic standpoint. However, such laurels typically come with a caveat, and the Mazda 3 is no exception. While some will appreciate the Japanese company's bold renunciation of conventional norms, others won't be as supportive. The Mazda 3 styling is one of the more polarizing points of contention in the company's vast portfolio, and looking at the hatchback's bloated rear, one could easily understand why. Even the graciously excellent executed rakish grill, long nose, and sporty overhangs can't wash away the stain that the Mazda 3 hatchback's overgrown behind represents. And while the design of its rear end itself can be chalked off into a retro inspiration, the more palpable problems it brings to the table remain. Like most hatchbacks, the 3 fights a losing battle with incessant blind spots that can make any driver's life difficult in certain situations, especially since the rear parking sensors aren't included from the get-go and mandate more expensive trim levels to bless us with their presence. Number 7. Baffling Powertrain Combos the base Mazda 3 models draw power from a 2.5-liter four-cylinder with 191 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. So far, so good, right? After all, most people don't require north of 200 ponies from a compact hatch. A six-speed automatic transmission might seem to be past its prime, but it works like a charm here, and the choice between the front and all-wheel drive is a welcome touch as well. And this is where the potentially problematic and downright peculiar Mazda ultimatums start to rear their ugly ends. You see, the Japanese will only offer you all-wheel drive with the penultimate carbon trim edition, as well as with the even more expensive turbo models which we'll get to in a moment. What's more, opting for all-wheel drive will also lock you out of an optional 6-speed manual transmission which could have worked wonders with the all-wheel drive exclusive turbo models. We know it's getting confusing, but that's not all of it. Also, if anyone's to blame for this mess, it's Mazda, certainly not us. On a final note, those willing to pay a premium for genuine hot hatch performance have the opportunity to do so by taking the 2.5-liter turbo 4 route. The 4-banger generates a whopping 2 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of twist, propelling the compact from 0 to 60 in some 5.5 seconds. Yet, instead of unlocking the full potential of its modern day hot hatch, Mazda opted for money grabbing shenanigans instead, leaving the Mazda 3 Turbo in its predecessor, Mazda Speed Shadow. In short, Mazda offers plenty of powertrain combos on paper, but only a few of them in reality. The base engine comes with front wheel drive, except in one instance, and a choice between the auto or a proper stick. The latter, again, being limited to a single range-topping non-turbo trim. The more powerful turbo models are all-wheel drive and automatic transmission exclusives, with the latter condition being a particularly bitter pill to swallow. It's a missed opportunity in the best of cases, and one that shouldn't have been too hard to accomplish either. Number 6. Turbo Engine Requires Premium Fuel To be fair, it actually doesn't as long as you don't mind some insignificant sacrifices in fuel economy and, more importantly, quite noticeable performance sacrifices. The regular 87-octane gas is a perfectly reasonable choice. To benefit from the full extent of the Mazda's turbo engine capabilities, though, you'll be forced to take the 93-octane route. Fail to do so and watch its ratings drop down from 250 to 227 horsepower, as well as from 320 to 310 pound-feet of torque. While it might not look like much, the discrepancy is clearly felt in certain traffic conditions, particularly when the Mazda 3 requires a rapid and significant boost in highway speed overtaking situations. Number 5. Outdated Infotainment System to this day, Mazda remains the only major automaker that still relies on the relatively short-lived rotary knob infotainment controller. A decade or so ago, similar solutions were omnipresent across the market, from lowly family cars to the premium models from BMWs, Audis, or Mercedes-Benz's portfolios. Nowadays, however, only Mazda seems to clutch to the now bygone days of simpler one-hand-on-the-armrest infotainment control. And that's something a lot of people will appreciate in Mazda cars. The company typically gives you a choice between a rotary dial or 
or touch screen. The only problem is, Mazda's infotainment is quite mediocre for a number of reasons. While the touchscreen display is smaller and less responsive than its counterparts found across the competitor's models. In the case of the Mazda 3, however, it's console dial all the way, as neither the standard 8.8-inch screen nor the larger 10.3-inch unit from the range-topping models provide touchscreen controls while the car is in motion. At least the standard connectivity features, such as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, alleviate the pain of clunky controls to some extent, while the more expensive models up the ante with their wireless counterparts as well as adding the wireless charging pad. Number 4. 50-Year-Old Rear Suspension Setup In a quest to cut the rising costs of the manufacturing process, Mazda opted for an unpopular move while wrapping up the design and engineering details of the current gen Mazda 3. Gone is the more sophisticated multi-link independent rear suspension of previous generation models. Instead, the current Mazda 3 sports a more robust semi-independent torsion beam setup that dates back to the mid-70s. More durable it may be, but it's the cost-effectiveness that recommended such a setup. Don't let anyone, including Mazda, tell you differently, because for every ounce of durability it provides, the twist beam takes away in terms of handling and comfort. Granted, the Mazda 3 hatchback is still a great handling car, one of the best in the market to be fair. It's just another missed opportunity really, as it could have been even better. At least the company is invested in sound insulation, offsetting the potential suspension noise issues from the get-go. Number 3. Cramped Rear Seat while it may come as no surprise given the Mazda 3's size and position in both the Mazda portfolio and on the market, its rear seat has been extra cramped in recent years, something to do with the mentioned suspension overhaul. Specifically, there are only 35.1 inches of legroom at the back. While the discrepancy is anything but game-changing and neither the old nor new models aren't exactly spacious to begin with, it's still a move in the wrong direction. On the other hand, providing extra legroom at the back would require sacrifices either in cargo space or driving dynamics department. The latter one being an insinuation of a potentially longer wheelbase, which would have resulted in completely overhauled handling matters, leaving the Mazda 3 a different car altogether. So it's understandable why the Japanese engineers decided against that particular solution. Number 2. Less cargo space than its rivals being a model that emphasizes refinement, fun driving dynamics, and comfort, the Mazda 3 hatchback leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to cargo hauling. It's potentially better than its sedan counterpart, didn't get us wrong, but at 20.1 cubic feet, it feels underwhelming at best when compared to its main rivals. Folding down the rear seats will double the Mazda 3 boot space and then some, but even with 47.1 cubes, Mazda's hatchback doesn't quite provide the practicality of, say, the Volkswagen Golf and its 52.7 cubic feet of cargo space. Number 1. High Price Tags Starting from $25,690 before the mandatory destination charges and other expenses, the Mazda 3 hatchback is a rather expensive car for its size. To begin with, it's roughly $1,500 more expensive than its sedan counterpart, and the prices only grow from there. The price gap increments between different trims are another noteworthy downside of the Mazda 3 hatchback, as they rarely amount to less than $2,000. Not to mention the panic-infusing drivetrain and transmission configuration limitations Mazda has opted to impose on its compact hatchbacks would be owners. All in all, the most expensive non-turbo premium models will set you back at least $30,350, $90 more than the recently added carbon edition models. The difference is that the former serves as your only way into manual transmission Mazda 3 ownership, while the latter serves as your only non-turbo all-wheel drive alternative. Lastly, the more potent turbocharged carbon turbo and turbo premium plus models cost $32,950 and a whopping $36,650 respectively. Quite a steep price for a compact family hatchback with lower practicality scores than its competitors. Still, the Mazda 3 hatchback is a perfect car for the select few, and neither of its competitors come even close in that regard. It's a driver-centric car that emphasizes fun driving dynamics and provides superior handling and more than adequate performance to boot. On top of that, it's almost lavishly appointed in its range-topping forms, effectively blurring the lines between the traditionally affordable and premium cars. Thanks for watching and see you next time.